Okay. So what we will do today will be diving in to connect between Django through Python using Python to the databases. Okay? And that's why I built the program, the application. One of the applications of the trades project is the main and one is to do. To do is a classical one, has only one table. So we'll see how that works. And then we'll extend a little bit to main. Okay? That will be an excellent exercise to understand how you control the database using Python from Django. That's the topic of today. So let's start. When we open what we installed, we head under the chart, the apps. That's all the applications. You have only the main and the to do. Later on, we, when we get toward the end of the course, we will learn how to add another application. That's what come later on. There's another application, game store, another library, and you can add many of them, okay? Okay, so that's what we'll do in the next uh, few sessions. For now, I would like to dive into the to-do program. The simplest program you can really have. And in all Django's application, in fact, there is one file called models. If you see, if you go into main, it also have a models. Models is the file in which you build up a Python object to create a table in the database. So let's take an example. Here we have the simplest one you can think about. I double click. And here we go. I defined an object called item. Remember that we studied in Python, we studied classes. And here we define a class and we define a class called item. Inherent from another object called model. And what it says here, models that model, it means that the definition of the model is written in a package called models. See so if you go and you do double you saw control B, depend how we install it. You can really find out that somebody in Django have defined that one. And in fact, even this one is, you know, it's a, a, the whole definition of what model is. And they put a lot of stuff, you know, from database. There's so many other things. Usually you don't really have to come to here. But since it's your first exposure to classes in Python, I just wanted to emphasize the point that Django is written with Python. So somebody in Django have written this class and it has so many functions that we're gonna use some of them, many of them in fact. There's a function called save, okay? A save base, it's many of them. As we go along, save parents, as we go along, we will see the most useful one, and say, for example, delete, we will use delete a lot. It's a lot, a lot of them, it's huge. You don't really need to go all of that, okay? In fact, most likely you will not go over it. You'll learn the most important functions as so you use them. In case you need something special, you dive in over the years and you know this one better. So let's go into what are we doing here already? We first start on the tab from Django DB, import model. You, in fact, bringing this object model, you models, okay, you see that's models. This is a bring it from another package 
It's called Django.db. The whole Python things is built on packages. When we install Django, okay, we in fact install all the stuff under it. So when you have Django.db, that means there is a directory under the Django directory, and under that DB, there is a, a file called models, and inside that models, okay, this model was defined, okay? So if I do control B, here we go. And the truth of the matter, it's probably defined as the base, okay, under that one. We really usually don't really care too much about it. The only thing is we need to know, we need to import this class and then we inherit from it. To remind you, when we dealt with Python, let me just record where we put that one. I don't know, where did we put that file of Python? Is that in the other? Did we, what did we download? Ah, we put it from the website, okay? When we went here, if, let me go here. It's right here, we have it in the class introductions to Python. In the bottom here, we have introductions to Python, and we downloaded this file. Just to remind you. If you remember when we got toward the end, we studied about classes. We studied about classes. Here we go. We had the animal class. That's the definition of the animal. And then when we inherited to create the cat, okay? So the cat, we inherit from animal. So we'll put the animal in parentheses. Very similar here. When we define the item class, we inherit from the model. The only thing is the definition of the model is sitting in some file under this directory. But that's co conventional, you'll see, we'll use it a lot. And uh, over time, you'll see how convenient and easy to do. The only things for now we need to know is that we have to import the models, okay? And the models, it's inside it, it has a definition of a class called model, and we inherit from it. So every table, that we do in Django, we inherit from this one. Later on, in more advanced class level of this class, you will learn how to inherit from another model, which allow you to uh, define tables to support several languages. But that's more advanced one. We'll get to that later on. For now, we define a class called item. We inherit from this one. We have to put the class definition as we did here. We have a class, we define cat, then we inherit from animal. Here, we define class item and we inherit from this model, sitting in this model's package. So far, so good. stage number one. To create a table, stage number one, we inherit from the model. Second, we define the columns we want in that table. This table will have two columns. One column will have text, so you can type something in it. And the second one will have the date, okay? So that will be two columns. The choice of the matter, I'm defining two, but in reality, there will be three. If you recall from the database class, we have a primary key in a table that hold entities. Every table in Django 
okay we'll have automatically you will add a column called id and that column is a primary key so this table will have three columns one which automatically built by the definition inside this model it's called id and then those two columns okay the first column i define it as a text and i call it text field you will see we we'll learn over time different types of columns in databases we want to be efficient so if i needed only to be able to type up to 10 letters i will use character field and specify up to 10 characters here i didn't want to limit myself therefore i didn't i use text field and not character field second can this one be a null okay the answer is false you have to fill it up okay is can it be null no it cannot that's why we put false i will talk later on what the difference between blank and null okay and for now for us it's the same okay that's for the first column the second column is the date column. If you see date field, it means you will hold the date. And now there is a little trick, and that's the beauty when we def defining it with Python, it automatically will tell the database, I'm not gonna fill it up myself. Please database, fill it up for me. That's why we call auto now. Auto now is the time of now when i'm doing something for this field update pay attention to my word update the date we will see later on that there is a difference between auto now and auto aid auto now it's everything that will be a change in the first field it will update the date auto aid it's only when I add a row in the database, then it will update the date. Don't worry about it if for now it doesn't make a lot of sense. As we go along, it will make a lot of sense. So let's see, after I do that, okay, just to show you that I'm actually the process. I'm going to go here to the to-do. I'm going to go to the migrations I'm going to delete this file and in a second it will make sense why I'm doing it. Moreover, I'm going to the database. You shouldn't do that on a regular basis. I'm just doing it for instructions, instructive purposes. So I'm going to open up. In fact, I have the database already open. If I go to the thread database, under that we have tables. And one of the tables is items, should be item. You see that? I'm going to remove it. I'm going to delete it. Drop, it should be, I should see here, delete drop. I'm deleting the table. If you do that, you'll get a lot of trouble. You will get into a lot of trouble. Okay? Don't do it. Okay? Uh, now, I myself always, here we go. I have a table called migrations. Please never do what I'm doing, okay? Do it when you get to my level, okay? If you see, there's a lot of comments here. He's following up on those tables. I'm doing it so you can see what the regular process, okay? See, before we added the table to the database, this row wasn't there. I just removed that issue. So from your point of view, ignore what I did now. Like I haven't done anything, okay? So you, you normally start a new application like to do, and we'll see how you create an application. For now, we're focusing on how to create a table. After you created this, object you go into the command line and you type python and we already know this command 
manage dot py and I'm going to write here make mid rations. What this one will do is going to go over all the applications, including the to do. It looks at this file matters and you will find that there is a definition for this object. Okay, when you find this object, you find if there is already under the directory, if there is a file with the SQL code to create it. Since I deleted that file, you will not find it. So you will recreate it. One more time. When I run this program, this command, it's going to run over the, the, all the application. It will come to the to-do application. It will look for this file. It found there is a definition of a new table. If you find the definition, it will go here and see if there is already created an SQL command to create this table. Since I already deleted it, definitely it will not find. So it will create that, that file. So let's run it, and that will make sense. I'm running it. And here we go. It tells me migrations for to do, the applications to do, create blah, blah, blah. I'm creating for you this file under the directory migrations in the to-do application right into here. So let's double click here. You will see, here we go. This is exactly the file it created. And it tells you it did it to create a model called item, meaning I, am going, I created the SQL command that you need to create the table inside the database. Since no command have been sent to the database, if I go here to the database, I will not see the table created. There's nothing because it wasn't created yet. Stage number two, by the way, it's nice once at least to go here. Today you don't really have to learn it, but this is basically an SQL command to run from Django to the database. And he's going to create, as you can see here, he's going to create three columns. This is the one that I told you about. He does it automatically. And this is, he call it auto field because he's going to fill it up by himself. He's going to fill up one, two, three, four, and you will see. Primary key, every row has to have a special number, a different number in every row. So for this column, it will fill automatically. It says auto create, meaning is going to fill it up automatically. And this column going to be the primary key. See, I didn't even write it. This is really just the default. Usually you don't really have to think about it. And the name of that column will be ID. Then it's gonna create also a text field and a date field. So if we run this one, that's what it will do. But how do we run it? That's for that one, we have another command. Same things, we start Python manage, okay, manage.py, and then we write mic rate. This command will go over all the applications. It will go under this directory immigrations and will look for those files. When you find this file, it will check in the database if that file already have been run. If it wasn't, you will run it. If you recall, I deleted, sorry, I deleted from this file migrations, this row, the last row that was here. Because if that row will be there, it will not run it again and I will get stuck. So I removed it here. Now it will think that I never run it and he's going to run it again. So by running it, see what happened. It tells me operation to perform, apply all migrations. You went over all those applications that we did here. 
and some that you can't even see belongs to Django. Sessions belong to Django. Content type, that's also advanced topic. That's the second level, we'll talk about it. But all through, we'll talk this, this uh, course, this level of the course, admin, we'll talk about it a lot, okay? Uh, but to do it's what we created, many, we created. It went over all of them and the only one that he found was this one. Therefore, he applied it. So now, we have a table. Where is that table? It's in the database. So let's go back to see what do we have in the database. First of all, I want to refresh this one. Pay attention, when I refresh this one, see he added this new wall. This way he understand which, which file he ran and which file he did not. And now we update himself. This is a table you should never do what I did today. Okay, unless you really understand perfectly. But this is a keeps for his own internal purposes. So I'm gonna close it. And we're gonna go here and refresh this one and see if we have a new table. Yeah, we do. You see, what it does, it created this table. And the way it gives it a name, the name of the table is the application name, underscore, and the table name. So if we go back to what we did, we only created this object. We ran two project, two command, one make migration. This one created this file. And later on, and migrate, it really ran the command and created the table in the database. So that's one objective of creating these objects to easily, very, very easy to create the table in the database without us having to learn all the SQL that we need in order to create a table. You can have done it manually inside the database, very strongly not recommended. This is the best, the easiest, and the most elegant way to create a table. Moreover, you will see, we'll be able to pull data from the database using this object. That's the beauty of Python. Python allow you to manipulate data in the database. So you becomes to be like only a Python guy. You don't have to be a database guy. Although you have some concept of the database, but you don't have to be like a DBA or data administrator. You definitely not. And that's beautiful. You see there's a lot of functions created with the model which allow you a lot of flexibility. We'll see that as we go along. So far we understood that. Now what I wanna do, I'm gonna run another one. I'm gonna run the serve again. Get port. I usually put the default. This is the default if you don't run anything. Why doesn't like me? Why doesn't like me? Ah. Uh, no, I didn't write, write run server. I just wrote server. Run server. That should work. And here we go. We have the application. We log in. We'll talk about the login issues. Login. And here we go. The application of to do. As I we did in the very beginning after we install all the applications, we came back to this simple application. I'm going to type here, Liam studying Django. Okay? Okay, and I'm clicking submit. Now, the nice thing is we will learn later on how is the whole process works how this button when I click, text whatever is written here, and submitting it to the logical layer as we did last week, remember? That's the logical. And the logical layer puts the data inside the database. So let's go back here. Let's look at this table that we just created. We do refresh. No, we didn't need to really refresh. We need to view and edit. And if you see here, 
see how nice it is. E A, it put the number one automatically because num this column is a primary key. I'm not going to touch this column. The database is going to manage it automatically. And if you recall, we even didn't have to define it. It's automatically defined by Django and it told him, this is going to be the primary key. Fill it up every time I'll put a new order, you fill it up with a new number. Okay, so the first one is one. Next time when I add another sentence, we're gonna do it in a second, it will put number two here. And here we'll put the text we type. And this one also, if you recall, we said this is going to be a date. And the name we gave it is a date posted. If you see below that, it tells you which kind of a column it is. This column is a dead column. This column is a text column. This one is an integer, meaning there are whole numbers. So if we go back here, pay attention. We define that to be a dead field. That's why it created its special column for dead. Moreover, we told him, please put the dead for me. Every time I fill this column, this row, this column, you fill up for me the debt automatically. So if tomorrow you'll fill up, you add another row, you will put the debt of tomorrow, and etc., etc. So let's see, let's add another row in the application. And this time we'll say, I hello. Okay, I click submit and he added another one. Oh, let's go back to the database, refresh this one, and here we go. We're getting Eichanoch, and you see in the database, in the primary key, he added this one automatically. I didn't really have to do anything. That's the beauty of using Python with database, you don't have to waste your time in programming all of that. It does really nicely, automatically. Secondly, it filled up the data again. So I didn't have to bother with this one. I didn't have to be bothered with this one. The only things I have to do is entering the data in here. That's pretty cool. That's really in the basic, the basic, why it's so nice to use Django, which is Python really, to manage a web application. It saves so much time. Later on, by the way, when we talk about machine learning, let me open up this project. It's nice always to refer to what we're gonna do in the next course. So if I open any, any any, any projects we will learn, any course, if you get to live a higher level like deep learning, the framework is the same, okay? In machine learning, we will use a lot of algorithms, but managing the data, for example, here, I have a project still inside this machine learning. But if you go here, you will see and the core I built up, see core is also an application, and also the core has a folder, uh, has a file, should have here a model. You see that one? I double click on it, and here we go. I have tables. You see, this is just tables, and the machine learning, when we learn about machine learning, we talk about this table, and as an example, by the way, this is really a nice example. But basically, I have really three tables defined here. The first one is security group. That's a very simple table. We ignore this one for now. We'll talk about it later on. But see, this table, it's very, by the way, I could have deleted this one. I didn't really need it. I, over the years, don't like to put it the way we did it here. And nothing really will happen, but I have it to make sure that I have more control. Because sometimes 
Sometimes I don't want the computer to fill up the primary key for me. So those are the cases that I will, I will define explicitly. Here it's implicitly generated. Here I decided to define the ID explicitly. You see it's autofilled, okay? And I defined it as a primary key. So that's gonna do exactly as if I even remove that one. But this is a very simple table. It only has two columns, the ID and the group. Let me show it to you. It's on the same database, but a different database. It's on the same database uh, engine, but it's a different database. If I go here and I go to machine learning, and I will go to the tables, see the nine things, all of them structure nicely. See, if you look at this one, security group, that's exactly what I defined it there. I will view it, you will see it have only two columns, the primary key, and I have a group. This time I defined it as character varying up to 50, okay? So how do I do it here? Here I told him, no, I didn't need the text because I know all, whatever I will type there will be up to 50 characters. So it's enough space. I don't really need a huge space. So I told him, give me a character field, but limit it up to 50. So nobody can type more than 50. Moreover, allow the user not to enter data. So if he didn't enter any data, don't complain. Don't give me an error. Very simple table. See, we can use it everywhere. This one slightly, this one very similar, but this time I have, I have four columns. See, we have four columns. You can think about it. This is like the parents table, or this is the parent, the table in every row here will have many children here, or I have a link between those two tables. If you notice, here I define the primary key, and here I define symbol. In addition, I gave security name, and here it's the most interesting column. This column, if you notice here, it says foreign key. You studied with Hanoch, that foreign key, it's linking those two tables. It links this table to this table. And the beauty here, the Django, allow me to use Python to define links between tables. The way we do it, first one, this is a foreign key. And after I write the foreign key, I tell him, go link it to this one he automatically will know that he has to add extra column in this table. So this table would have four columns. The last one, which called security group, will be linked to the primary key of the security group. And that link can allow me to do a lot, a lot of beautiful stuff, and we'll see later on. But first of all, I wanted to show you the stuff that you study with Hanoch about structure of a database, here we're implementing it with Python. That's why we didn't spend too much time how you write the code in SQL, because Python will do it for us. So why waste the time? So this one will create the link to the primary column here. Moreover, this one, if you don't produce one, you will complain. This one, sometimes it will, so, and most of the time we know, but you really should know what it, this one is. And that's, I will say it now, and I will repeat it later on in future classes, okay? What the meaning of this one? Say, see, there is a link between security group to security. Let's look at those tables, and that will make sense. This is the table of security group, so I have five groups. Group number one is S&P, you see S&P. 
So let's close this table or let's go to the table that it links to its securities. Let's open it. So that open. See, we have four columns, as I said before. Last column is the foreign key connected to the primary key in the table of security groups. And all the one that has ones in the last column belongs or linked to the S&P category. See, the one that is two, you see there's other one, other rows are linked to all of those here. Here we go, up to here, now belongs to the first group. All the rest belongs to the second group. We will see later on when we talk about query sets, we will see how I can find all the children, I will call them, that belongs to the S&P. So in the security group, we have five groups. If I want which securities belong to the first category, we will learn how to do that. And the one that we will need is that related name. So for now, it's good enough to say we write related name so we know how to connect between a specific group here to all the children of that group in this table. In other words, it will allow us to find for group number one, all those children, and we will need to do that, okay? I will demonstrate the meaning of that, okay? Let me demonstrate, and in later sessions, we will see it's so nice. Even in the machine learning, we use the same command, run servers, but the content is totally different. This time, I'm gonna use a different port so it will not conflict because I am having two servers running at the same time. Yeah. One server. I put an S here. See the implication of that. We haven't learned how you do that, but at least from data point of view, database point of view, I would like you to understand it. I click here. And here is the application. I'm logging in just like in the framework. Got in, but this time I have totally different menu. This time I have a different menu of projects. This time, see if I click on S&P, I want him to give me only the list in S&P. If you notice all those guys, it's the whole, the list here, is all the names in this table with a one here. It will not include the one that has a two here, okay? So let's go back to, the, to this table. If I want number two, I want now the, all the one that belongs to group number two. So I really want now the list, yep, what happened, you like me? Okay, if I want the ones with number two, I programmed it and we will learn it's during the course how we do those kind of things. If I go here and I click on fund, it will give me totally different list. What is this list? This list is the one that in the database, uh, in the database, has a number two here. How do we do that? We will learn later on in the course. But for now, you understand how important the link between those two tables. In fact, if you think about it, on the top, I have those five categories. And when I click on each one of them, those categories came from the first table. And when I click on one of them, if I click on New York Stock Exchange, it will give me number three. That will be all the one and number four in the second table. That's beautiful. And that's why we need a database. It's so important to understand that. The reason we split it so 
you know, we have only number two here and it's linked, it's linked to this table. So we don't really have to write, we could have avoid this table altogether, but it will be a waste of space. Instead of writing funds, funds, S and P in this column, we just turned it to number. Number two, number one takes so little space in the hard disk. On the other hand, writing the word, it takes much more space. So that's why we converted it to be an, an integer and this table as a navigation. Does that make sense, uh, Liam? Liam, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Does that make sense? You understand the whole concept? Mm. Yeah. Excellent. By the way, at the same logic, we have a link. By the way, this is a course, the next course you will see. It. Every security group has several securities. Every security can have many prices and different dates. So here, this is one too many. For every group, we have many securities. Every security, we have many prices on over a long period. So here we have even more columns. And here for every security, we can have a lot of uh, prices. To demonstrate it, I will use one here. See, after you click here, let's go back to the S&P. If I click on Apple, by the way, this is Apple computing, the Apple company that you know, if you click here, it does a lot of things. One thing is really an advanced algorithm, okay? And another thing is it brings me all the data. See, this is the data prices sitting in the third table. See how many there are. Just for this, it's starting from beginning in 2008, when we have data for this company. That's, tw I'm sorry, it started from 1999, 12-31, December 31, 1999, up to today, up to the 18th, which is today, really, yesterday. Today is still the report. There is the, even the, I think the trade in New York only started this morning. So this is real prices, up to date. This is the last trading date, which was yesterday. If you run that one again, it will upload new stuff, but that's what we'll learn in the second course. In machine learning, we'll learn how you do stuff like that. Secondly, when you click here, but that's belong to machine learning, okay? Not to this course, okay? These are the nine things he did predictions. And the beauty now, you see why we have to have the first course. The first course that we're doing now, we're really learning how to organize the data. Later on in machine learning, we learn how to use the data to make predictions, classifications, and many other stuff, beautiful stuff in machine learning. But you know, jumping to machine learning without understanding how database works, it makes the course totally uh, unuseful, I would say. So here is a beautiful example. Uh, we have one table for groups, each groups can have many securities, Apple, MIT, uh, IBM, Google, you'll see all of those are there. And then for every security, we have a lot of prices starting from the beginning of 2000 up to today. Tomorrow, if you run it, the algorithm, that's the part of the algorithm. He knows how to go to the internet, pull the data, put it in my database, and later on run, and a very sophisticated algorithm in deep learning and create a forecast for the next following year. That's a beautiful. So the reason I'm showing you that one because here we have a beautiful link of three tables, one too many and one too many. How you know that there is one too many here? You should look for a definition of a column with a foreign key. Here we go, security, I have models, and here we go, foreign key. And that foreign key from this table price 
it goes to the table security. So that tells me one too many. Again, from this one to this one, I have one too many because in here, I define foreign key from here, from this one to this table. That's beautiful. One last thing before, in fact, we can go back to our other project because it's there or two. Uh, no, I don't have it here, only the other one. So I forgot that we don't have a link. So let's go back to this one. One more thing, I mentioned this one, relate, we'll see it in the future. It has to do with the fact I want for a specific group to find out which one belongs to a specific group in this table. That's what we'll see later on. Another thing is this one. This one you have to define. Most of the time we will say model cascade. What does that mean? It means that if you delete a row in this table, it will delete all the rows in the security table that are connected with this foreign key. One more time. When you define that one, this one tells him what to do if you delete a row here, what do you do here? That means if you delete a row here, it will delete all the rows that they are linked to this table. It's a must know things. Very important, it will not let you to define the table unless you specify what you want to do. You can write to ignore, meaning it will turn to be an orphan. What do I mean by orphan? If the security table has some rows which do not have a link to a, a, a group, that means those ones are orphaned. They don't have a parent, okay? This is supposed to be the parents of every row here. For every group, I have a lot of rows here. But if there is rows here, they don't have a parent, they become to be they're known as orphaned, okay? You can allow that. 99% of the time, you will not. 99%, if not almost 100%, you define it as cascade, okay? Okay, good. We covered how we build up from Django tables. I would like to conclude the session for today with going up to the tables we have and the other application. We have two major application in the one you installed. It's meant Let's see here which kind of tables we have here. A double click. That's a little more sophisticated. Beautiful example. And see what we have here. This is really interesting. And this is, I put it for instructions purposes only. Very not recommended to do. So in a real projects, you're not gonna do it. But for instructions purposes is good. All what we did here, we took an object that somebody have created in Django and we inherited, but we did nothing with it. We didn't change it at all. So the bottom line, what happened here, we just gave a name to this table. There is already a table in Django, definition of a table. Abstract means there is no such a table in Django. When it's abstract, that means I just define it, but I never created it. When I inherit from it, it will create it. Actually, when we do a, a Python manage.py Mac migrations, it will create a new table according to this definition. But strongly not recommended to do it in this respect to users. And we'll see later on why. Then we have another table which we created here. This one called a user profile. And if you notice user profile is, here is a user, has a column, this is a column. And this column this time is linked not to a foreign key to this table, it's linked by one to one. To remind you, what does it mean one to one? So 
for every row in the globe user, there is only one row in the user profile. Another word. It's not like in our previous example that every security group could have many rows in the security table. That's one too many. We use foreign key. Here, for every row, there is only one row in the user profile. Think about it, what we're really trying to do here. We have a table called global user. Let me go and show it to you. I'll go back again to the database. Let's close this one. Let's close this one. And let's close this one. Beautiful. And let's go back to the browser. We will go back to our database. And if you look at that, there is one table called global user. If you open it, you have several columns. This is somebody already designed it in Django. This is a good opportunity to remind you, after you did the installation, you ran a command called create super user. When you created that create super user, really what you did, you created a row in this table. This table keeps the users. It's a special table designed for putting the user, but since Django created it, it didn't put everything inside, okay? i give you an example. I have an ID, I have a password. By the way, you see it's totally encrypted, so nobody really can know what is your password, even I. Even I have an access to the database, I cannot translate it. It's encrypted. So nobody can go to your account in any application you build up with this framework. Last login, is it a super user? It is, if you recall. We gave it an admin as a username, and we didn't put the first name, last time we should, and we'll do it maybe in another session. But is it the staff? You automatically put all those stuff. But if you notice, there's, maybe there's more information I would like to add. I would like maybe to have more columns. Since this is an object created by Django, you don't really want to touch it. So what you do in real life, you extend the table. What do I mean by extend the table? You create another table, like what we did here, user profile. And this is like linked directly to the other table. So here we go, pay attention. We do not have a phone key. We have the same ID like in the other table. In this table, you have an ID. The same things, the same idea will be here. But what happened here? Here, I can put what is the website. If the user has a telephone, which I couldn't put, there is no column for telephone. So I need a column for a telephone. So when I use a one-to-one -one relationship, in another word, I really want to create, I want to create really extension of a table. So if I want to extend this table to have more columns, I kind of create another table, link them together, and how do I link them one to one? So every row in this table will have equivalent row in this table and they will be linked, okay? In more advanced later on, we will learn a very sophisticated way how when I fill up the data on this table, it automatically will update and will create a row here and will update the data there. But that, this is this part. We'll learn, this is called signaling. We will learn about signaling in another session. In fact, a little more advanced topic. For now, just what's really important for today, you learned about how to link two tables in one-to-one -one relationship. And you also learned, which is very important, Okay, here we learn about linking two tables. Not here, we learn in the other projects. We learn about how to link one to many by using foreign key.
When I use foreign key, I create one too many. In the other one, we created, here we don't have any link to anything. And here in the, these projects, we have a link one to one. That's pretty cool. And see all those, by the way, if you see here, there's one field which is very special field called an image, okay? We learn about that field later on. And really interesting, very important. It doesn't really keep the picture inside the table. It will keep just the link, but we will talk about this field in another session. What's very important for me to know, uh, okay? And you know what, I will summarize what we did today, okay? What we learned, what we did today is A, that in Django, we create tables in every applications using the model file. In the model file, we started with a simple model, meaning simple table, and we saw that in order to create a table, we inherit from a models that model. This is a class we inherit from it, and we have to define it as a class. So item, it's a class that inherits from models. Later on, we have to define which columns will be in this table. So we learn that if I don't specify, Django automatically will create a primary key for me. It creates for every table a primary key, and the ID is the ID of that uh, uh, column. And that becomes to be the primary column. Second, here I define two more columns. Here I define it as a text field, meaning you can almost type as much as you want. And we define also a column to be a date. The reason we define it as a date, we want to know when a person has filled up that row we wrote here auto now, meaning please database, fill it up automatically for me every time somebody adds a new row and types in the text. So two things happen when somebody fill up a text in this table, in one of the rows of this table. The other two columns, the primary key will fill up automatically and also the that posted will be filled up automatically. The primary key will have a new number, and in the date, it will put the date of today. That was the simple table creation. Then we went on and we looked at more sophisticated definition. We defined security group, which is also a simple class. We talk about this one in some other session. For now, we just see we define two columns. But the special things is when we define the second table, one of the columns, this one, is define a foreign key to the security group. By doing that, I have a relationship of one to many, okay? And we saw how it looks like in the database. Finally, we looked at another model, and we looked at another model in the main, in our projects, we looked at the main. In the main, we saw that we have a definition of a global user. We simply took the definition from the abstract class designed by Django. After this one created, we made sure that this one is linked to this one, but this time in a one-to-one -one relationship. Meaning every row in this table has one row in this table. And that's really conclude the session for today. I think more than that will be a little too hard. So we will stop here and I would love to hear if you have questions, please feel free. And I really advise that you will go over and Practice a little bit, okay? Questions, Liam? No, no questions. No, everything's perfect? Uh, I just need to practice a little bit and then I'll be. Definitely, definitely.
So that's good. But I think this is a amount you can handle, hopefully. I think you can. Uh, I'm going to upload this video. Please see it. And, and be ready for next week so we can move on and talk into more detail on how do we really put data into the database and we talk about the logical layer and combine it with all the architecture we talked about last week, last session. Okay? Thank you, Liam. Have a good one. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye, Liam. Bye, Liam. Show me your face. Let's see. Yes, hello. Bye, Hanov. Bye, Liam. Have a good one.